A new community of golf teaching professionals has come together and has gone viral over the internet. I'm Biv Wadden with DevotedGolfer.tv and I'm here today with Nick Shurtok, the uh, inspiration and originator of the Golf Teaching Professionals Facebook group. And uh, Nick, uh, this is an unlikely, a, a fascinating story, but you're an unlikely person to have originated this group. You are not a golf teaching professional, are you? That's right. That's probably the most common question that I face. Even from guys that have been in the, the group on Facebook for years, they assume that I'm a golf teacher. I'm actually about a 12 index golfer. Uh, I started a blog a few years ago uh, called Golf Progress, which is essentially me documenting my effort to try to get to a seven index. I set a, a time that I want to do this by, which is by age 40. And so uh, obviously I'm a golf nut. I got really into the, uh, the fitness and biomechanics part of golf a few years ago. So really studying the, the body swing connection and, and why aren't golfers getting better and why do they get stuck at a certain level uh, over, you know, I, I know guys that have been playing at a 15 for 20 years and have been working at their game. They take lessons, they read the magazines, they watch the golf channel. They don't actually make any progress. And then a few years ago, uh, Facebook had always had these groups that you could set up uh, around common interests. And there had been golf groups that had grown to just huge numbers, but they were essentially places where people would post spam, there would be no real interaction, and there wasn't a real community. And, and captive to a single teacher, too. Yeah, if it was set up by a teacher, you know, the the other teachers who maybe weren't aligned with that person w wouldn't be that interested in, in hanging out there. There have always been forums online, uh, you know, private forums outside of social media, but that, that was probably the first experiment with uh, creating communities around being, you know, golf nerds, basically. We're talking about the, you know, really trying to break it down, not being afraid to get into mechanics. So a couple of years ago, I, uh, I started taking all these friends that I had made through my blog and my video series and my, my efforts to, you know, understand everything that goes into golf improvement during my whole journey of trying to, you know, gather and analyze all kinds of instructional material, I made friends with several hundred golf teachers. And uh, I, I started some groups. One was called Golf Biomechanists. There are uh, about 300 people in that. There's a golf fitness professional group, which is essentially trainers. After setting up those groups, uh, the guys who own KVEST, uh, Tony Morgan, Tim Souser are, uh, are guys who run KVEST and, and are in charge of the instructional component of working with teachers on, on how to use 3D and how to incorporate that tool into their teaching. They approached me and said, hey, what do you think about doing a group like you did for the Golf Biomechanist? Because it had been some real great interaction, mainly seeing interaction between guys that didn't really talk to each other. You, know, you got guys who uh, represent different companies who don't necessarily have any reason to hang out you know, they're competing against each other. They either have uh, competing hardware or software solutions, or they just have completely different ideas and different approaches. Here, it was an effort to, to get them together. And so uh, Tim and Tony said, hey, let, let's do a group for teachers. Why don't you, you know, help us run this thing? And uh, I kind of took charge and, and set it up in January 2010 or as January 2011, I started initially with about 300 teachers. How did you, how did you get those first 300 teachers? Did you just, uh, kind of, did they help you with the Here's with building what, a network? It's what happened, to, it's going to. Uh, we've got 1,260 like yeah. and there, there's people being added a lot today. People Pro still sure. finding out about yeah. the group and it, you know, it's gonna continue to grow. You know, the golf teaching business for the most part is a bunch of guys in isolation practicing their craft. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, you teach with a few other instructors who, who you can you know, be mentored by or to bounce different ideas off of each other. But there's a lot more guys that are just out there doing it on their own and don't really 
have that opportunity to just get in a room with another 20, 50, or now 100 or 1,000 other pros who uh, have gone through what they're trying to go through or have, have proven a, a drill that works really well or, uh, you know, if you want to argue the concept of, you know, with, with chipping now, are we, are we no longer teaching to lean the shaft way forward and, you know, dig the leading edge in? Are we now, you know, talking about using the bounce more? Which, you know, where did some of these ideas come from about how to use the knowledge that guys are getting from TrackMan and from these 3D systems? And so the, uh, the group initially started with a burst of all my golf teaching professional friends on Facebook because Facebook changed the way the group's uh, product operates. And I actually have, uh, my, my real job is a CPA. I'm a tax <laughs> accountant. I'm not in the golf business, really. I mean, even my blog and videos are essentially a hobby. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, I talked to the guy who runs the group's program in Facebook. He said the groups were set up for about five to 10 members. That was the intent when they created that product. Uh, I saw an opportunity to be able to quickly add people to a group like this without having to ask them because it used to be you had to get someone to opt in to be in a group. They changed the product in about October 2010 to where you can add your friends without asking them, which can be problematic. There's a, plenty of people in the social media space who say you should never add someone to a Facebook group without getting their permission. So it wasn't a problem for me since I knew all these guys ahead of time. I told them what I was doing. I said, I'm starting this group. I'm going to add you. Instantly, it was the first group of its kind. And so there was some first mover advantage there. But you know, a, a lot of the reason why this group has grown to 1,200, and there's been about probably about 300,000 comments, and uh, you know, it's it's I, I moderate it. I put a lot of time into it. I think one of the things that, that I, I I found like surprising <clears throat> uh, when I first joined, I've been in this group for nine months. When I first uh, joined, I was absolutely convinced that <laughs> that you were a teaching professional uh, due to the way that you the the, the excellent way that you moderate and, and keep the, the, the new threads you know, coming. And uh, I realized uh, later on um, that it, it might be the best thing that you're not a teaching professional because your, your uh, kind of fascination with so many different you know, subtopics within teaching is still fresh. That's true. And, and uh, I think you've done a, a great job at, at uh, doing that. But it, 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 at first, I was convinced you were a teaching professional. Well, thanks. I, so I take it I as offer, a compliment. Yeah, I, I, it is a compliment to you. For, uh, for a golf professional who's watching this, uh, and, and I want to um, emphasize this is exclusively for teaching professionals, uh, but if someone's watching this, how should they go about you know, joining? Well, they can find me on Facebook, Nick Shertock. My last name is C-H-E-R-T-O-C-K. They can find my Facebook business page, Golf Progress, so they can uh, search Golf Progress on Facebook and they'll see mm -hmm. my business page and they'll be able to interact with me there. Uh, they, if they know anybody who's in the group, that person can add them when requests come in for people to join the group. I definitely review them all. Uh, a lot of times it's really easy to tell that a guy's a golf teacher uh, based on the, the mutual friends that we'll have. But if it's somebody I don't know and we have 75 mutual friends and I look at who they are and they're all golf teachers <laughs> and there's a picture of them giving a golf lesson in their profile, mm -hmm. uh, they, they get approved right away and they're in there to see the entire history of all the conversations that have happened in the last two years. Now there was a, a get together um, the other night on Wednesday night here at the uh, the PGA show. Um, talk a little bit about the kind of the first annual Facebook group uh, symposium the other day. Yeah, what well, we had what we called the open forum, which was an effort to see if we can take this online experience of guys starting threads and not really being told what to talk about, but to just let it naturally evolve 
uh, we tried to do this in the real world at an actual facility here in Orlando, mm -hmm. Metro West. We got about 200 guys in the room. It was a bit chaotic at times. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a definite sense that if we do it again, we're going to, uh, you know, ahead of time, create some more firm topics, some, some probably some panels. Uh, but you, what, what a bunch of guys told me is that they've actually never been in a room with that many top teachers before. Well, this was a popular event. Um, <clears throat> I remember when you first, you know, put out the uh, kind of call to, to, you know, get it going, there was going to be a limit, you know, to 85 participants. And, uh, and I know it built up fairly quickly to that. Um, but it was, uh, I mean, you had to go well beyond that uh, because of how uh, uh, interested uh, everyone was in getting, you know, together with, with uh, yeah, everyone. And I, and I know I made uh, at least uh, a half a dozen uh, very important um, new, you know, teaching friends uh, through that dinner and the, um, the connections that it fostered in, the, in, the, in these next few days, uh, you know, uh, well at the show. And I, I got to give extra thanks to uh, Mike Michaelitis, who is uh, from the big break. He's a long drive guy. He's a college golf coach, Long Island College. And he actually had the idea of let's take what we do here. Let's actually have an event where we get together in person because what was happening was a lot of guys in the forum were saying, let's get together. Friday night for dinner, or what are you guys doing during the show? Let's let's have a little meetup, and so all credit to Mike. It was actually his doing to say, let's you know book a venue, let's have drinks, let's have food, let's have you know a four-hour block of time where we set it up as an event. Of course, in Facebook, using Facebook events <laughs> so that we can track. Who's going to be there? You know, I made name tags. It was all printed up. It was, you know, there was some some pretty good effort put into organizing and getting good people in the room. Talk a little bit about the the themes um, that run through a lot of these threads that have have kind of drawn the teaching professionals to, together. Um, for instance, I you know just technology um, and and uh, deep plane. Discussions, uh, you know, TrackMan, FlightScope. Um, um, talk a little bit about uh, what you have seen as some of the major themes that have well been surfaced. I'm going to back up a little bit and just uh, say that when when I first started learning about golf teaching, probably 20 years ago, it seemed that there were these two schools. There was the I'm a feel teacher or I'm a mechanics teacher. Mm -hmm. And you know, and for years, the word mechanics kind of got a bad rap where guys were wanting to move away from being called a mechanics teacher mm -hmm. because right. then you could get pigeonholed as a guy who's so focused on, or guy or gal, you know, because there were female instructors there as well. But it, it is a male dominated group. But we, uh, for years, were afraid of mechanics. My group is not afraid to get into the mechanics of the swing. We really kind of embrace going after that topic. Uh, so if it used to be feel versus mechanics, and then at a certain point we started seeing this split between teachers who believe in a weight shift versus teachers who believe in either staying on the front leg, stack and tilt style, or a centered pivot. And so we kind of had that split going. The, the split that seems most obvious now is kind of the old school versus new school pro with their use of technology, namely TrackMan and what it, what it tells them and how do they incorporate it into their teaching. Mm -hmm. And so that was... Uh, and that, that, but that's developing too. I, I think the uh, uh, many uh, teaching professionals uh, have been intrigued with the technology. They're purchasing it um, and then uh, they have to kind of work it into their teaching and I think uh, it's been very valuable to have that exchange of ideas um, you know here's how I'm using it in my teaching here's how I'm not using it you know right you, know, you get and, and you get great anecdotes yeah. in the group from you, know, you can hear from a pro who just yeah. bought the track man and you can hear how is he using it in ways that he didn't expect you know maybe his thought was I'm gonna use it on every shot I'm not gonna tell 
the student what's happening. I'm just going to use that to guide my teaching. And then he realizes, well, the track man can actually confirm to the student what I've been telling them, that their face is open to the path 10 degrees. Hmm. Uh, they never really bought into it until I was able to show them on track man, look, here's what the data is telling me is happening at impact. You may not be able to tell on video what you thought you were seeing with a divot pattern or with a guy's swing where, you know, some appears to be over the top with a left swing direction, but because he's hitting the ball on such a descent, the club is actually still going out at the time he's striking the ball. And so that's, that's basic D plane in the way that uh, you can have a new understanding of why something looks a certain way to the eye or in 2D, but you needed that 3D information to tell you that, in fact, he's actually drawing the ball even though he looks like he's an over-the-top slicer with the move that he's making. So in, in terms of the uh, distinction between different teaching approaches, right now you, you have guys who for years taught without these tools and they had great success. And so a lot of them are thinking, why should I adopt these new tools when I didn't that, that need are, them That are previously. not inexpensive, by the way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And besides the, you know, the return on investment issue is a, another topic altogether. We don't really get too much into the, the business of teaching in my group. I, I keep it about the craft of instruction. This is really about giving a better lesson, getting a better result for students. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Chris Como was a key uh, part of the event the other night. He uh, is a friend of mine who's a newly minted Golf 100 teacher. Mm -hmm. He's uh, 35, he looks 25, and uh, he's a real whiz kid. He's studied with a lot of great minds that, that most teachers are familiar with but haven't really worked with directly. Not many people have worked with as many of those different guys as Chris has. So he was, in my mind, perfect to be able to moderate what can sometimes be a tense situation within the group between these kind of competing factions. I think, I think one of the neat things about the group is that it, it's a true meritocracy. Um, I know um, <clears throat> when you, 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 there are you know, teachers, I'm one of them, unknown. And you know, when I get into threads um, and, and present my views, nobody really, they just care about my view. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, whatever status I do or don't have really doesn't matter. Um, the internet itself is the, what creates this meritocracy. Mm -hmm. you know, you, the barriers to being able to interact with somebody else have come way down. Way down. And, you know, if, and it's fun yeah, for, if, for, for someone like myself. If, if somebody has the passion and expresses that to another expert, even if that person is considered a celebrity, uh, they're going to have a nice little interaction there, and it's not going to require paying $1,000 to go to the guy's clinic. You, you know, if, if that person is in the group, they're expressing that they're open to being reached, and a lot of friendships have come about mm -hmm. from the Teaching Pro group. A lot of jobs have been... Uh, given to people based on meeting them in the group? Well, Attila, on, on behalf of the 1,200 members, uh, I want to thank you for uh, starting this. Uh, um, it, it came from an unlikely uh, person, uh, but we're all thrilled that you've put the energy that you have uh, into it. Uh, and I, uh, I know it's going to continue uh, to flourish uh, uh, for you and for us. And, and uh, so uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining me today. Um, thank you, Biff, for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm Biv Wadden with uh, DevotedGolfer.tv. Uh, thanks, Nick, and see you soon.